On the tropical island of Bali in Indonesia, there are countless species of tropical bamboo. Bamboo has been used there for all sorts of purposes since ancient times, most obviously in house construction. Bamboo is even used in the sophisticated irrigation system, which makes Bali's intensive rice cultivation possible. I took part in the establishment of the Environmental Bamboo Foundation about 20 years ago in Ubud, an important city in Bali. The founder of the Environmental Bamboo Foundation is Linda Garland. She's built beautiful bamboo constructions on Bali and has been invited to other countries to build exquisite bamboo houses there. Linda Garland has British aristocratic roots. She came to Bali as a young designer and architect in the mid-70s. Fascinated by the rich craft traditions of the Balinese, she made the island the center of her life and created her own little kingdom here. Her Balinese creations soon made her one of the most sought-after designers for the international jet set, for whom she designed and built some of the most exclusive holiday homes in Asia and the Caribbean. I started making furniture. Having selected my own bamboos up in that forest, I, w I noticed how everything was made of it. And I became very interested in, uh, because it was so beautiful. I was interested because of its beauty. And then I realized how important it was for the environment because it is so strong. And I started to study it and I realized that it, it, that it was the sustainable timber of the future. Linda Garland has just built an entire holiday villa complex on Bali, commissioned by a Hollywood celebrity. Anyone who's anyone in Hollywood has to be green and into ecology. For the construction of the houses, Linda resorted to old Indonesian traditions and uses only wood and bamboo. I and mean, I think if you, what, what I've always realized is that if you have an image of something that is very beautiful and you're trying to spread the word, the image is the attractor and from that image you can then tell the story. So one of the reasons I try to utilize it in many of my projects, you know, I've, I used a lot of it in a house for David Bowie on Richard Branson's Island, all these things that I, I get the bamboo in there and then I can tell the bamboo story. So it's, it's used almost as a sort of, it's, as an attractor. Only a few kilometers from Linda Garland's bamboo foundation in the center of Bali is the headquarter of John Hardy, a jewelry producer. Although 700 people work here, at a distance the buildings are hard to distinguish from the rice fields of the environment. The buildings are mainly built of bamboo and, as their architect half-jokingly says, are also biodegradable. When I first came to Indonesia, I lived in a bamboo house and it was literally falling down around my ears and I hated bamboo. I couldn't wait to get out of a bamboo house, to get something that would last forever like concrete. And uh, fortunately I met Linda Garland. And uh, when she started her bamboo mission, I at first thought she was crazy. I mean, who would want a bamboo house? And then slowly, slowly I started listening and I realized that bamboo is the future. And She's really responsible for, has inspired everything I've done with bamboo. John Hardy came to Bali in 1975 as a penniless hippie. Today, he is the fifth largest jewelry retailer in the United States. He skillfully markets his jewelry as a sustainable luxury product with an uncompromising eco image and in this way has his finger on the pulse of our time. The center of his production facility is the sales room. Inspired by an outsized fantasy ship, the 30-meter-high building is made only from bamboo, string, fabric, and beeswax. We're looking at making Indonesia the bamboo building capital of the world. 
If I wanted to build a bamboo building in New York City today, I mean, they'd probably put me in jail. It's just, you know, so far from the understanding of the concrete pouring masses. It's just, a, but Indonesia is a fertile field for anything you want to do that's uh, evolutionary, that's revolutionary. Indonesia is really the place to do it. An especially visible feature is Hardy's way of combining new technologies with environmentally sustainable materials in the company's computer center. From here, contact is maintained with worldwide distributors and customers. Of course, the floor is also made of bamboo, and even computers disappear behind bamboo decorations whenever possible. So it's pure bamboo, and, uh, and it's a challenge how to do it, how to get the glue that isn't toxic, how to put it together with pegs, how to take the Balinese bamboo knowledge. I mean, the Balinese are natural born geniuses and they are building incredible structures. And now we're taking many of their traditional structures and building them out of bamboo, like the kitchen. We built an entirely bamboo kitchen. We turned off the gas. We used to spend a million rips a week on gas. We now cook on sawdust and rice hulls. Stainless steel is going out the back door. Stone, bamboo are coming in the front door. It's an incredible possibility, the deglobalization of, of the world. Believing that the only great food in the world comes off stainless steel tables is just like, I mean, how crazy is that? In the tropics, bamboo is the cheapest building material of all. Thanks to its tensile impact and load-bearing strength, it is also possible to build solid and yet cheap bridges from bamboo, if you know how. The leading expert in the construction of modern bamboo bridges is Jörg Stamm, originally from Germany. His most beautiful bridge to date. It, uh, it's a 22-meter span. It has a 45-meter ridge beam. It's made from, uh, from regular patung, yellow bamboo, but it also has black bamboo in it. So it's, uh, it's a bridge to the future. It really is a magnificent, a magnificent structure. If you look at this bridge, you can very clearly see a supporting arch and also these tensioning elements, these tension rods that go to both ends. This is an ancient design. It already existed hundreds of thousands of years ago. Nature makes it possible because bamboo has enormous tensile strength, like steel. One square centimeter of bamboo has the tensile strength of construction steel, about two tons. Bamboo is as hard as oak and it grows three times faster than spruce. So when you look at the energy balance and compare it to some other hardwoods, tropical woods, then it not only makes sense to build with bamboo, but you simply have to because it's a real ecological alternative. Indonesia for centuries have made amazing bamboo bridges. Uh, and what you have to do is you have to repair them a little bit on a regular basis. It's not you make it once and then leave it there. But if you grow the clumps near it, you've got the you know, you've got the skill there and you've got the plants there, so you just keep maintaining them. Like any natural material, you have to maintain it. It's got to have a hat on, it's got to have a coat on, it's got to have boots on. It's a, it's a series of pipes that absorbs water, so you've got to protect it from water. That's really important, protect it from sun. I mean, look at this roof up here. It's better to have a, a long overhang on the roof so that the midday sun, which is really strong, doesn't come straight onto the bamboos. A brief. I mean, you don't put an orchid out in the midday sun. You don't drop your computer in the river. I mean, you, you've got to understand the nature of the material that you're working with and respect it. Until now, the biggest problem with using bamboo as a building material has been its susceptibility to attack by fungi and insects. If bamboo is attacked, it gets damaged and eventually destroyed. Pilze brauchen zu ihrem Wachstum Feuchtigkeit. As fungi need moisture for their growth, you can largely prevent fungal attack by giving bamboo a dry roof. 
That is to say the surface is covered and it has a dry base. You don't put the bamboo directly in the ground, but on an iron rod or a durable type of wood on a cement base. Protecting it against insects is more difficult because they feed on the starch, which is an important component in bamboo and gives it the energy to grow so fast. The method of environmentally friendly bamboo preservation jointly developed by Linda Garland and Walter Lieser has now established itself as the most practical one. The bamboo has its knoten. Bamboo has nodes, also called diaphragms, and they need to be pierced so that a salt solution can penetrate throughout the bamboo. You pierce all the nodes, up to the very last one. The last one remains intact, and so you can fill it with about a coffee cup full of solution and achieve lasting preservation with a salt, for example a boron-based one. Insects that eat it get stomach ache, so we have a building that lasts forever. Of course, it must be carefully thought through. A boron salt, for example, is only effective against insects. This treatment makes the previous use of highly toxic wood preservatives obsolete, making bamboo even more attractive as a building material. Traditionally, 60% of the houses in Java and Bali were bamboo. Because again, when the earthquakes and the eruptions came, the flexibility of this plant, the houses danced. So now they build these concrete houses and bataco houses that just collapse. Now there's this whole concept of the new bamboo. Yeah? So there was the old bamboo. And that's the product that was used in Indonesia as a temporary um, uh, resource and temporary material, you know, maybe, uh, you know, ten, uh, five to ten years uh, at max. I'm implementing it into the housing uh, sector and creating, for example, low-cost bamboo housing that is earthquake-proof because the bamboo is elastic in its property. You know, this is a highly tectonic region, Indonesia and all houses have to take that into consideration. Traditionally, 60% of the houses in Java and Bali were bamboo. Because again, when the earthquakes and the eruptions came, the flexibility of this plant, the houses danced. So now they build these concrete houses and bataco houses that just collapse. For example, you have an earthquake in Jogja and people who had brick homes uh, that fell down are rebuilding brick homes because they think that this is the only way forward and this is the best way forward. You don't construct bamboo buildings the same way you construct steel buildings because you're using bamboo, not steel. And that's what we're doing with our social house that we've created trying to hybridize it and you know fusing a couple of for example Colombian joinery systems so that you you get the structure a little bit more rigid um, so that it really does become this earthquake proof house that can withstand earthquakes up to 7.0 Richter scale. If you took the properties of bamboo and you called it you know techno fiber and you wrote out the engineering properties of it and showed it to governments and builders and they go, my God, of course we want it. And he goes, well, actually, you know it. It's got another name, it's called bamboo. They'd be very shocked because they don't understand the engineering, the engineering properties of it. They know it's been used a lot, but it was for the poor. So this is the sort of the moment in time where it can be uh, very useful.